Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, Casta. Hello. Hey. Happy Thursday, and welcome to all for joining us today. So I think we're just going to give others a minute so that they can still join today's webinar. And uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Anne. I'm part of the customer success here at Sendable. And of course, I'm partnered today with Costa. He's part of our support team, and he'll be helping me in answering some of your questions later on. So today we'll be talking about smart cues, how to add contents to a queue from the you know, from the uh, Compose block, also from the um, Bulk Composer, also content suggestion, or by simply just using a profile list. Okay, so we'll answer your questions on the second half of the webinar, but please allow me to present today's topic on the first half of the session. And for a little housekeeping, notice that we have this chat here on the right-hand side. It's on the far lower, lower right-hand side, so it's just there. Um, there's a chat there, so you can just simply pop in and say hi to everyone or simply wait for you to engage and say hi there. And also just beside that, you'll have the questions tab, and that's where you're going to put all your questions, but please keep your questions relevant to our topic today, which is smart cues. Okay. If you have any other questions aside from the smart queue, please reach out to the support and they'll be very happy to help you on any other topics Incendable. Okay, so for those of you who have attended our webinars before, you know that we love starting this all with an icebreaker. So please post your answers in that chat box here. There you go on the right side. So majority of us worked uh, from home or remotely, though some may be on a hybrid setup now, but I know that there's a large chunk of you that are still working away from the office. So our icebreaker for today is, what's your least favorite part or aspect of working from home or working remotely? So I have a long list why I love working remotely, but I still have a few things on my list that I don't like when working from home. So I guess number one is the um, you get distracted. Particularly if you have dogs. So we have two dogs. So sometimes they just love fighting over a small treat or, you know, just a simple spot on the couch. They do that. And the worst time they could do that is when you're on a Zoom meeting or probably on a webinar. Fortunately, didn't happen when I'm doing the webinar. Good boys. But I do love them. They're very stress relievers, of course. So let me check. Diana said no people around. I miss that. I miss that as well. Like talking to your peers, chit chatting about not just work but also, you know, personal life, everything around under under the sun. Working late, mm, maybe. Uh, I don't know how to react to that, but you're supposed to be not that late when you're working from home. Um, snacks and birthdays. Um, well, snacking, that's, uh, I'm guilty on that one, of course. So every one of us would like to stress eat sometimes, but definitely a valid point there. I'm going to piggyback off of Jamel, um, Jamel's mm -hmm. answer, because that's actually a really good answer. You, you work late because you don't have to catch a bus or you don't have to beat the traffic and you're just like, oh, okay, I'll work on this a little bit more. And then before you know it, you're like, oh, I'm half an hour in. Yeah. Hmm. You're, yeah, you're working more than you're supposed to do because you're just at home, you're feeling at home and you're really on, on it, like working on it. So yeah, that's good. Well, keep your answers coming. I'm going to start sharing my screen here so that I can keep the ball rolling. Okay. Um. I'll jump off and I'll be back for the Q&A. Oh, yes, please. Thank you. Uh, okay. There you go. All right. So now let's talk about smart cues. So we are used to scheduling content by picking a date and time in the calendar, but SmartQ is a totally different way of scheduling messages. 
So you can consider Smart Queue as a way for you to set a timetable for your posts. So you can set a specific day and time of the week for your contents to go out. Now, Smart Queue is a perfect is a perfect way of sending out evergreen contents and also non-time sensitive posts. So perhaps posting about events or holidays may not be suitable for the Smart Queue, but Smart Queue is definitely a great way or a great feature that could really save you tons of time. Right now, I'm inside my own dashboard here, and you can find Smart Queues under the Publish vertical menu here. So you just click on Queues. There you go. As, it, as you can see, I have uh, the queues that I've set up, the client AQ and also the travel queue here. Uh, my queue is a default queue that you'll have once, um, once you open up your Ascendable account. Now, I'm going to show you how to create a smart queue. It's as simple as clicking this new queue button here on top. Then we can just give it a name. So in this example, let's just put it as the demo queue. Now, as I mentioned, it's also good for evergreen content. That's why we have this option here to recycle the messages. So if you select on, that means it will just keep on posting the same contents that you have added into this queue. So just a little caveat here, just be sure that you have a lot of contents added to this evergreen queue if you're going to take on or select on, because if you only have one or two, contents or messages here, then it will just keep on recycling those two messages over and over. So unless, of course, you turn it off. But for this example, I'm just going to click off. All right. Then just below that, we have contributors. And so these are any team members that you want to, you know, give them the chance to add different uh, messages to this queue. I can pick probably Mike Lane and then Jim. So I'm going to add both so that they can add to this queue as well. Now, the exciting part is you go to the left and you get to pick the timetable. So we have Monday to Sunday. So let's click Monday first. You get to pick what time on Monday. Maybe let's choose 9 a.m. You can skip a day. So let's skip Tuesday. Let's go and jump right into Wednesday. I can still pick another time here. Maybe I want this to go out on maybe 2 p.m. We'll skip Thursday. We'll pick Friday. Aside from picking a time here, you can also opt to choose the optimal time for Friday. Just click it. It will give you different time slots. So this is based on historical data, the most engaged time for your previous postings. So it may show you multiple options. So maybe I'll just pick 129. And also you can add another one. So you can add multiple time slots here. There you go. Okay, let me exit out. So maybe we can pick something at around 5 p.m. So I have two time slots for Friday. I'm just going to save it. And as you can see, I now have that demo queue here. Now it's time for us to add contents to this demo queue. Now, there are different ways for you to add messages to the queue. Well, the most famous one we all know is the Compose button. So you have the Compose button here and also here. But since we're on the demo queue, under queues, when you click Compose here or here, it will default to the demo queue. I'm under Smart Queue, but I still have the chance to change the queue where I want to post. Or you can also go back to the calendar view, just in case you want to go back to just picking a date in time. So that's still an option. So let's go for demo queue. Right here, you'll see a plus sign. That means you can technically add a new queue, new smart queue. You can create a new one. Or you can just click on settings. So you can view the settings of the demo queue that we already have. So there you go. You can edit. We're not going to edit that right now. So I'll pick two different profiles, one for Facebook, and I'll try one for LinkedIn. And I'll post something. I have this text generator here. Thank you to Julie for sharing this tip. Now I can just put random things in the original box. I'm not going to edit per profile. Okay, so I will make sure that this exact post will go out to Facebook and LinkedIn. And because of that, it will only take one slot from the queue that I created because I didn't edit. So this will be just an exact same copy. So I'll click add to queue, which is a demo queue. And there you go. It only 
took one slot, which is Friday, because that's the next available slot. Well, today is Thursday, next available slot is Friday. Now I'm gonna show you another way, maybe a different scenario. So I still have Facebook and LinkedIn here and I post this, but I wanna change a little bit, just a little for Facebook. Maybe I just wanna add a hashtag here and that essentially changes the copy. So it's not exact same copy as with LinkedIn. So this will take two slots from the um, smart queue that I created, which is a demo queue, okay? So to show you how that works, let me add it to the queue now. It will prompt me that there are multiple variations. That's okay, that's intended. I'll just click on queue and close to acknowledge it. And as you can see, it now took two slots here. And as if you could remember, there are two slots for first Friday. That's why I have also one here under Friday, and the next one would be for Monday. Okay. Um, profile list. So for those of you who are using profile list, you can also um, create contents and add it to the queue. Now, profile list is just a collection of different profiles that you put into one list. Like for this example, it's Wonder Snowman profiles. There are three different profiles inside this list, but I'm I can only post exact same copy to all this um, to all the profiles inside this list, and I cannot edit. So with that, it can only take one slot from the queue that I created. Adding it to the queue now. There you go. It only took one slot, and that's of course Wednesday. Now, if some of you may be asking, can I still change the sequence of these um, postings or this queued contents? Yes, you can. Let's just say, for example, this uh, content for LinkedIn, you can drag and drop it to another day. So let's say I don't want this to go out on September 12, Monday. I want it to go out on Friday, September 9. So I'm going to swap it. I just click this, this icon here, and drag it. So click and drag and then drop it there. There you go. So you can just click and switch, click and switch, whichever you want. So it just moves around the, uh, the contents. Also, you can do randomly uh, shuffling the messages. So I can also do that and randomly shuffling it. Okay, now how does this look like in your calendar? So all you need to do is to go to your calendar and notice that we have queued here. Well, let me refresh. Very did the word September ago. Let me refresh my whole browser. There you go. Now I have queued here, so I can see the different queues. And let's go to the demo queue. And there you go. These are the posts, the contents that I queued in for the demo queue. Now, there are also other ways for you to add contents to the queue. One of them is to go to the content suggestions. So you can go here contents and then go to suggestions and then you can go to you can browse through different topics uh, I did save a travel topic here so I can just click it and it will show me different articles about um, about traveling so I can pick one maybe something that I want to share or maybe something that I want to add to the queue so let's just say this one I can click the three dots here and then click add to queue there you go still trying to load up so I can pick which profile I want this to go out to and then I scroll down then I can pick which queue I want to add this to so maybe put that on a demo queue and then I'll just add it so if I go back to the queues demo queue that is there you go it's just right down there also Aside from adding uh, contents from the content suggestion, you can also do that from the uh, bulk composer. So you have two options. One is from here or this one, the second option, whichever you prefer is okay. So click it. It will give you option to put the message here and take note, there's a set date and time here because this is scheduled, the scheduled status, but you get to pick queued so under queued you can pick this the specific queue let's say demo queue 
There you go. Now the date and time is gone because we already have a pre pre predefined schedule or a timetable that we created, right? So all you need to do is to uh, type in um, anything. I'll just put random stuff here. Um, there you go. And I'll pick this one profile. Now, these are optional. The URL and also the image are optional. So in this example, I'm just going to import it, add it to the demo queue. Okay. It's now imported. Let's just refresh. There you go. We have the Hello World, Happy Days, and also the Terrific Setup. They all took one slot because they're all individual uh, contents. They're, they're, they're original on their own. So um, what else did I miss? I think I pretty much covered everything. Um, there's also one way, which is for RSS feeds, but I'm going to let Costa discuss that. So I'm going to invite Costa over to pretty much give us more tips. Hello. Hello. Uh, so give me just a second. We have one question from Lauren, a really good question. Mm -hmm. Um, so Lauren is asking, can you share someone else's posts on social media, like retweet, share, etc., through cues or only share articles? So um, let me share my screen. How about that? It's a good way to get started. Share. Hmm. And away we go. So Lauren, if you have, let's see, a keyword monitor set up for example and let's say uh, wow that's a good keyword monitor okay say you find something over here which I can't sublime wow something in French which ends in sublime wow and it got picked up by your uh, keyword monitor and you want to retweet that click on the retweet button and if there's anything that you can publish you can add it to a queue so um, so you can see this is a retweet. All you have to do is select the Twitter profile that you want to retweet it with. And instead of sending it out now or scheduling it, all you need to do is queue, add it to a queue. And now I've just added that to my queue. Okay. Oh, that's my bad. Sorry. Bad example. Gonna have to pick a different Twitter profile. Okay, so add that to the queue. And now this has been added to my queue. So at some point, actually specifically tomorrow at 11 in the morning, I am going to retweet Ilstropbot. So <laughs> that's how that works. Uh, let me delete that because I don't actually want to retweet it. I don't know what it's saying. Um, so you can do that. Um, now, just to compound everything that Anne has already said, cues are an extremely useful tool. All you need to do is to dedicate like five, ten minutes into this admittedly slightly maybe a little bit too complex to be usable feature, but it, it totally isn't complex or too complex to use. All you need to do is dedicate five minutes to it, and it will end up saving you loads of time, especially if you want to bulk import. So if you have a... 100 posts, something that you definitely know is going to be going out, like the next 100 posts, which are going to be going out, you can just use the bulk compose feature from directly within the queue that you want to schedule uh, your posts uh, in. See, so automatically pick the, the queue that I was in, and you can just add those here. Now, that saves you the, the time and the effort of having to select the exact time or date that the post is going to be going out. So that's just unties your hands. And what more, one thing that I love about queues is that you have the option to recycle them. So if you just keep on adding stuff into your in your queue, so if you have any evergreen content, if you do, I don't know, what's the most common evergreen content? Um, recipes or jokes. If you have a queue that's specific for that, keep on adding stuff into your queue. If you have 100 jokes, add them in there. You come up with another 100 jokes add those in there and just keep on adding the jokes in there who knows you might end up with the funniest queue ever created 
But the thing <laughs> is, you can just have like jokes and jokes and jokes, and you can just keep on adding them into your queue, and you can recycle them. And not only can you recycle them, if you think that they've been recycled a little bit too much, and you want to change the order, you can shuffle them. And it changes the order. It reorganizes your queue. Actually, let me select that. Okay, now it's shuffled. Um, so like I said, it's a really handy-dandy tool. Um, it's definitely worth getting to know a little bit better so that it can like, mm -hmm. help you manage your workload. Um, 10 out of 10, I'd recommend it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Also, I guess you could also use it if you have a specific, um, let's say your client is requiring you to post on a specific days of the week and time. So if you don't want to miss those days and time that you agreed as a contract with them, then by all means, use the smart queue. So you have a predefined timetable. You don't have to pick the date and time because all you need to do is to add them to the queue that you created for that specific client, and it automatically does the thing. And you can still rearrange the sequence just, just in case you want to do last-minute editing. Absolutely. One a good example probably is um, inspirational quotes. So a good example would be if you have a motivational Monday that you want to always post something on Mondays with a motivational code, then why not create a... Um, a smart queue for motivational Monday and then just keep on adding um, contents to that and it will keep posting on Monday as you schedule the that as you planned for that specific queue so quite useful absolutely absolutely uh, we got one more question mm -hmm. um, so can I add some of my some of my past posts to a queue you can add past posts you can add undelivered posts you can add scheduled posts um, so let's take uh, sent posts, something that you've already sent out in the past. Um, so you might want to filter it by uh, a specific profile. Let's say this profile. In this case, I only sent out two posts. But you can copy these, export to a CSV file, test 543, because why not? Save. And then I'm going to go over to my queue new Q1, and I'm going to compose in bulk, select the profile I want to post to, and upload a CSV. Select that CSV file. It's going to ask you what date format do you want to use. You can completely just brush through this because it doesn't matter. It's a Q. And you see these two bad boys right here. Import these. And there are your um, your posts right in your queue. So Liz is also asking, if I'm using manual scheduling and the smart queue, will the queue know to not schedule something around the same time as something I've manually scheduled? Liz, good question. No, those two things run separately. So if I schedule 100 posts, and this is good old scheduling, you didn't add them to a queue, you selected the time and date manually, and those 100 posts are scheduled, and they're in your calendar, and you can see them. And then you set up a queue, and you add another 100 posts. Sendable, your dashboard is just going by what you want to do. You have 100 scheduled posts. You set them up this way, because this is how you want them to go out as a scheduled post. And then you have your queue. So we, we treat these two separately. Um, so you're going to have your queue and your scheduled posts going out because they're two separate entities. The scheduled posts, you can set them to repeat in a specific way, uh, whereas queues, who knows? It might be evergreen content. Uh, we're not looking at the what the queue is per se, unless, of course, it's a tweet. Our system is going to pick up if there's mm -hmm. a, a tweet going out for a second time within a, a 24-hour window, and we'll let you know. But everything else, it's, it, it, it's just how you set it up to go out. Uh, Costa, perhaps you can show them the calendar, how to view the queue. It's, it's separate from scheduled post and the queued post. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. let's see. Let's pick a queue with a lot of stuff. And that is Mun to Wed. Uh, so let's go to the calendar. So right over here in the calendar, if you hover over queued, you can see mm -hmm. the list of queues that you have. Uh, so if you click on that specific queue, you can see all the posts which you have queued to go out. So this is me for September. And then we have October right over here. 
and this month. And these are my scheduled posts, so you you can see these right here. Um, and if you do this, actually not Adam, this one, you should be able to see these side by side. Let me see. I think we got a question. Okay, so Liz said that this is why she's avoided you using smart cues because she wanted to have more control over the ones that um, she's got to go out on, out on specific days. Mm -hmm. um, and she wants to avoid them going out too close together. Yeah. Liz, I can completely understand. It really, really does come down to the how you work. So if you want something to go out on a specific day and it's time critical, um, don't use cues. So if you know that someone has their birthday on the 23rd of September, of uh, or holiday. October. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Schedule that post for that specific date. Cues, you can use it for everything else. Yeah. So let's see. Are there any more questions? Looks like not. But Liz was asking, OK, so then I can go in and edit as I see them if some are close. Yes, you can still edit them. So same thing with scheduled posts. You can still edit queued contents and change them. Yep, or maybe absolutely. switch them over. Yeah. So if you find any post in the queue and you want to edit it, click on edit. And edited, save to queue. And you'll see the edit has taken place. And again, yeah. you can reorganize the queue. You can either, like I said, you can shuffle them or you can just uh, drag and drop stuff in the queue, uh, which works just fine. There it is. Um, yeah. Or maybe you, you want to edit the settings for the smart queue if they're too close. Maybe you want to change the, the timing. You can also do that. Yeah, yeah you might want to add or remove days. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, it's a handy dandy tool. You can change it on the go. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. it's just meant to save you time. Exactly. So, um, any other questions? Please post them on the questions box. Look on that tab. Looks like we don't have any more questions. Going once. Okay, here we go. Twice. Looks like we're all good for today. Well, that's it. Okay. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. And also thank you to Costa for helping me out on today's webinar. So for, for next week, uh, we will, uh, we'll be discussing custom tags and UTM options. Marcus will be facilitating that webinar together with Julie from the support team. Again, that's on next Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions on what topics to discuss on future webinars, you can just simply shoot us an email at success at sendable.com. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Enjoy the rest of the week. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.